Hello everybody, it is me, Steve, and I just watched... Now, hear me out, because I know some of you aren't a fan of this guy, but, you know, that's not why I mentioned it. I just watched Thunderfoot's most recent video, I'll link it below, about how kind of giving every smarter every day a boost and more railing on Elon Musk, which honestly at this point is justified. I've been following that guy for years. He is a physicist. He is a scientist. Uh, and unlike Dustin from Smarter Every Day, he doesn't have a stake in the game with NASA like Dustin does. So Dustin had to be very political about his assessment as where Thunderfoot did not have to be. Now, I am making this video because I disagree with Thunderfoot on one key thing here. He says in that video, you know, engineers tend to think of how do I do this? Scientists tend to think about why should I do this? And that's partially true. We'll just run with that. But his argument was why go some people back to the moon? We can do it all with robots. We can do it all, you know, remotely. It costs too much. And honestly, as somebody who realizes and has been saying this for years that if we ever want to permanently leave this planet, we're going to have to leave modern capitalism behind us because the money becomes so much. And when you have dumbasses literally blowing it up on the way to orbit, it doesn't help. Okay. So, but we're going to ignore that. We're going to also ignore the technological snafus with sending people to Mars or the moon. We'll just say right now it's doable. Okay. When you ask scientists, most scientists, and I've, I've done this as well. I know a lot of physicists and chemists uh, and geologists, and I am a geologist. So I'm a scientist as well. When you ask scientists, you know, why should we send people back to the moon or why should we send them to Mars? Most scientists will probably say we shouldn't. You know, we can do it with robots. We can do it with robots in low orbit, whatever we need to do. Cost effectiveness. But you ask most geologists and you're going to find out we're the group that says, no, you need to send people. Why is that? <laughs> why are geologists so adamant about this? Well, for several reasons. First of all, We'll get rid of, we'll hit the technical ones first. Now, dick slinging contests aside, because quite honestly, that's the only reason why we went to the moon in, in the late 60s, early 70s. It was a dick slinging contest, okay? Now, feelings aside, there is something to be gained from having some boots on the ground. There always is. And I am also ex-military. Now, boots on the ground to the average person doesn't sound very okay so we have boots on the ground so how is that different from not having boots on the ground well boots on the ground other than establishing your territory from a military standpoint or your victory or whatever boots on the ground are important because human beings can make decisions robots cannot now ai isn't to the point you know it's going up fast though where they can make effective decisions about things and maybe they will be able to within the next 10 years but the problem right now probably the biggest problem more than anything is the communication delay on the moon it's not that big of a deal it's a second or so okay it's from ground control to major tom you know it's not that big of a delay and it's always that but if you send somebody to mars Depending on where Mars is in its orbit relation to the Earth, if it's on the other side of the sun, you have a long wait time. It's between sending a signal, and when it's directly blocked, you can't even do it. But to send a signal and wait, you know, come back and make a command decision and all that, you know, you turning around can take days when it should take, you know, a few seconds. <laughs> you know, but that's with the robots. Humans can do something robots still can't do. When you pick up this rock as a human being, for one thing, robots don't have the senses we have. They have the senses we program them with. So if our purpose is just to get the chemistry of a rock, that robot isn't going to be able to do anything other than that. Okay? That's all it can do. All right? 
But me as a human being, all my senses are active right now. They're always active. All the time, they're on. Whether I'm using them or not is a different story. But they're on. And I can look at this, I can feel this, I can feel the texture. This is something robots can't do, and you know, geologists always do this. We lick it, and people say don't lick rocks, but you know, I've been doing it for 40 odd years and I'm not dead yet, but I mean, you know, look at me too. <laughs> anyway, so holding this tells me stuff, feeling it, even if I'm not looking at it, I could gain information from doing this that I can't from a robot. All right, and I can't get from just looking at it. Now, if I just look at this, I see a picture of this, and assuming communication was instantaneous, which it is not, um, you know, it's limited by the speed of light, I see dark spots. Well, those dark spots holes, or is are they plugged with something? Now, if I feel it, I can tell it's holes. I can tell it's porous, okay? If I'm just looking at it, I don't know. I would have to have the robot bounce something off of it or to go up to it, brush it, something like that. And if I didn't put that on there, how do I know? And I've done a video like this before about rocks on Mars and looking at them, people go, oh yeah, that's sedimentary. Look, it's layered. Well, you can layer igneous rocks, newsflash. And a lot of people don't know that, but you can. <laughs> okay. So, you know, just, just having robots takes a very, long time even if they had ai their decisions still going to be limited by their physical capabilities like we are okay if i don't program it to do something or give it the equipment to do it it's not going to be able to do it i don't care how smart it is all right i don't just like i don't care how smart a human being is i can't jump into the sky and fly okay <laughs> i don't have that equipment that's the main reason why you see geologists, because a geologist could pick up a rock within a few seconds. I can go, no. Oh, I'm taking this with me. This might be important. And then if I had, it doesn't take a lot of extra weight and mass of a spacecraft to put the basic testing kits, if you will. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start selling these. They're expensive, but they're not as expensive as sending robots. <laughs> I mean, you know, even a limited kit doesn't take up a lot. Of, it doesn't weigh a lot. So you put that on there for something that weighs maybe a kilogram at the most. And you put that on there. And if I can't do it in my spacesuit, by just picking it up because my senses are restricted in a spacesuit. Okay, I may not be able to feel that texture as well. Okay, I can at least put it in my pocket and take it back to the craft and when I take my suit off do a couple basic tests and realize that's garbage okay I shouldn't have picked that up but I did okay oh no this one's definitely good definitely good and all this takes you know what less than a day and then you can assess the weight how much you need to take back and all that and you've saved time and this is the one resource Americans don't think about is time we are so money oriented all the time about everything that we waste so much of our time trying to save that money to keep it from dying that we don't think about time and time money comes and goes you know it's fucking money all right it's 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 a human concept and it's it doesn't exist in the physical world all right it doesn't i don't care what you say it's not a reality okay it's a concoction of the human imagination what does exist outside of us at least we're pretty sure is time okay if einstein's even close and once it's gone it's gone so would, is it worth the investment to spend billions and billions of dollars to send some people there who could do everything robots can do in a couple of months? Or do you want to probably waste the same amount of money over the next 40 years? You know, instead of a two-year, three-year trip, you 40, 50 years, and like I said, probably spending the same amount of money on having robots attempting to do what a human can do in a few minutes. That's my point, okay? It's not always about why and money. It's, it's more about time. Because like I said, once it's gone, it's gone. And problems on Earth aren't gonna wait for us to pull our heads out of our asses, all right? So 
That's why most geologists will sit there and say it's worth it. But most scientists won't. Because if you think about it, most scientists, other than geologists and earth scientists, they're basically lab rats. Or I, I know a lot of people say engineers are scientists, but those of us that are hard scientists don't include. Engineers are more applied scientists. They apply the science that, that they're taught. Scientists are different. We can apply it, and we do, but we're out there trying to figure stuff out as well. Engineers pretty much don't do that. I mean, I know they figure out problems on sites and construction sites. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about unknowns in science, okay? I'm not talking about problem solving on site. That's not what I'm talking about, all right? They are problem solvers, engineers. Don't get me wrong. We're not bashing engineers here. So... I'm just explaining why geologists sit there and say we should. And there's other reasons, too. Um, a permanent presence in space, for one, would be nice. There are certain things you can do with humans on the moon that you can't do from Earth or from robots. You could do quick repairs, for one. Um, you know those reflectors we left on the moon? Last time we were there, a couple times before, I forget which Apollo it actually was, that people have to find now, we can bring little pieces of those up, make them a lot bigger. So you don't have to hunt for them. And we can move them. And we can be like, hey, ground control, can you see this thing? <laughs> do I need to change the angle? You know, you can do those things that robots can't effectively do. You know, you can do things quicker. Human beings can still do things far faster, even faster than AI can, you know, I mean, you know, Skynet itself in Terminator couldn't do anything, Skynet couldn't stop humanity or wipe it out, it had to be connected to those resources in order to do that, it itself couldn't do anything, okay, it was just a brain in a computer, okay, so that's just, you know, you have to have those tools and those other things, and yeah, humans are bulky, we weigh a lot, we consume a lot of resources, but in the long run, is it worth it? I think it is, all right, the thing is, though, we gotta stop giving morons contracts, okay, we gotta stop listening to the sales hype, Okay, we got to start focusing more on, and something very, thing that Dustin did bring up was the communication, because I see that in the civilian world. The military, I didn't see it so much. The military is actually pretty proficient at many things, and people are, people in the military are like, oh, the military's going for killing people. The military did, the military's not controlled by the military. It's controlled by the people you elect. The military... I notice learns from its mistakes more than civilian world does. The civilian world might learn from something, but then it's forgotten after 20, 30 years. You know, generation goes by and everything's forgotten. But I just want you to know that's why <laughs> us geologists are always so much like, hey, no, send people. But, you know, we do need a permanent pre presence in space, too. And the moon is a place to do it. You ain't doing it on Mars. We are not going to Mars in the next 100 years. I guarantee it. I don't care if there's a technological revolution. I don't care if humanity pulls its head out of its ass. We're not going in the next 100 years. We're not putting boots on the ground to Mars. The moon is completely doable as long as we keep things simple learn how it was done in the past, try to replicate that, do it in steps instead of trying to fucking put a full-blown goddamn colony on the moon with technology that doesn't even exist yet. But anyway, I hope that's it. We're past 17 minutes. I'm, I'm just going to stop here. I hope you learned something and leave some comments below. All right. Have a good day.